All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our conference call set for uh, October 13, 2019, and this is for the Africa for the Africans Tours and Investment Opportunities in Traveling to Senegal, the Gambia, South Africa, and Ghana for Tours, Repatriation, and Building Cooperative Business Enterprises. But most of what we'll be focusing on is the tours that we have to the four different countries. And also, uh, everyone, uh, what I have set up is a presentation that was sent to everyone that we have on the the actual tour email list. And this was sent October 11th, and it's a PowerPoint and a PDF uh, presentation. So right now, I have the PDF version up on the screen sharing. And my goal is to go through some of it. It's a 41-page uh, slide, uh, so it's literally too much information to go over. And half of the slide directly itself is about uh, investments and business, which we won't go over much. But it also, it's also information and details uh, of anyone that's uh, interested in this, any of the variation of information we have. It's all there. Uh, that's what we do, tours and investments. And more so the investment side is this in the developing uprise. Um, but the main focus of what we have always done is uh, tours. All right, so what I want to do is go to a list of the table of contents on the uh, presentation. And I wrote this down to where there's a topic on the table of content for at least every one or six page. So um, every few pages or so, it's a different topic. All right, so uh, I'll just go to uh, go to the slide numbers and topics. That way, everyone could be uh, clear as far as uh, what we have set up. Uh, three, uh, general terms for all tours and investments. Four, Bomani time by intro. Seven, about us, mission and vision statement. Eleven, Senegal and the Gambia tours, April 2020-2021. Sixteen, South Africa tours, November 2019-2020. 20, Ghana tours, December 2019-2020 and May 2020. 26, Preparation for Africa, Investments and Opportunities. 30, Kwame Nkrumah on the Needs of Africa. 33, How to Get Organized for Business in Africa. 37, Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. 38, Getting Started with the Journey, Our Process, and that's for Tours and Investments. 39, End of Presentation, Questions and Answer. 41, Contact slash Follow Us, The End. So that's um, my latest presentation as far as this whenever I present or share information on Africa tours and investments. And depends what we are specifically talking about, I just use that focus. Uh, so the biggest thing we're focusing on is those tour dates I mentioned between slides 11 uh, past uh, 25. All right, so I'm at uh, starting off with slide three. Uh, general terms of all tours and investments. So basically what uh, this detail is a summary of what you have there on the website when you're dealing with any tours. And then the investment that we'll have up will have its uh, own terms. So once you're on our website, Africa for the Africans.org, what you have to do is go to the main uh, menu and then click on whichever country and month of tour that you're looking for. Uh, example, if you click on Senegal and the Gambia Roots Tour, uh, once you open it up, you'll see a general terms. And once you click on the general terms, it'll give you full details as far as all the things that's uh, covered that you just need to know, know clarity about. Uh, so example, the full tours and investment general terms and details on the main menu are going to specific tours uh, details as far as, as, far as deposits, um, cancellation, refund. It'll give you a heads up, let you know that if you need, if we have to work on a visa or no visa, Go through the details of uh, who's responsible and the responsibility of the tour and, and what's uh, not included as far as travel insurance and things like that. And um, more important, it goes through encouraging us to, to, to understand that this tour that you're traveling on is 100% the same as this, any other uh, form of tour. So it's a cruise ship, transportation company like Greyhound, Airlines, Delta, KLM, or just staying anywhere else in the world. 
Um, it's the you know, same process. We all have to take accountability for whatever booking that we agree to and confirm and where we need to be on time and everything. And, it, and what I'm always available is to communicate, whether you have to text me, call me, or send me an email, or just any other way you, you know, we have communicated. Uh, that way everything is clear. So a lot of times we're going over a lot of the same information and we have certain information up, but it's hard for us to go through everything word for word. So every time I talk with everyone, I'm always asking, is everything clear? Do you have any questions, um, anything you want to talk about? That way we have a full group of people that are focused on the same path and are the same positive energy. And that way we can make the best of our journey and our investments. Uh, um, and that main investment being paying for a tour that takes you around the country. Uh, with all the things that we have highlighted on the tour overview of what's included. And quick uh, closing of the uh, terms, one of the main things that we just ask anyone that's traveling with us is understand that we're moving a whole lot of people and we need, you know, the worst thing that we can have is difficult people. So we're asking all difficult people to just leave the difficulties in America and then come on to Ghana Senegal, the Gambia, South Africa, any other parts of Africa, wherever we you know, have a journey or a connection to, and the same thing with investments. We want people with positive vibe that can connect and work together with each other. And if there's ever any issue or things that uh, need to be dealt with or communicate, you know, for me it's always simple. We just, you know, all you have to do is communicate, that way we're clear, and we work whatever out and we move forward and enjoy ourselves. And it's very important, especially for the tour as we're going around the country, um, I'll tell everyone that you know, I live outside of Atlanta and the hotels that they have in Atlanta, they don't exist where I live at in this county. I live at uh, Creighton County. And I think the best you may find is like a two-star hotel and maybe a three-star if at all. But uh, you, know, you go to Atlanta, you have all of the big names and certain things. So it's the same way when you go to you know, any other country. Um, you know, when, you, when you're in Accra, you know, you have, you know, we have set up the, the Micklin Hotel, and that's a nice business hotel right by the airport and everything. And the same thing, we go to Kumasi. They have a, you know, they have a connection there in Kumasi where it's, it's, you know, it's even at a higher class as far as the hotel business setup you know, and all the things that you, you know, you'd need. Now, when you go to other parts of Ghana, you may not have all of those things. And the main part of Ghana I'm talking about is Cape Coast Elmina, you know, where we're there for three days. And you know it's you know we're you know it's kind of like on a natural resort, and then we have a bed and breakfast across the street uh, called Carrick Hotel. But it's like it's not a business or a five-star resort or hotel. So those are the time where we just ask everybody just to go with the flow and just enjoy the, the setup of what we have organized and what we put together in these tours to write an itinerary that will give you a certain experience. Unless we tell you that we're doing something like in South Africa where it's three or four star hotels the entire journey, you know, it's more our foundation tour where, you know, you get a full all around balanced experience, you know, and it's more in the mid size, so it's not like you're in a village where there's no lights or anything like that. Uh, you know, the lights may go off and things like that, but it's trying to get everyone focused, understand that this is a journey of a lifetime. And the main trip I'm talking about is Ghana, Senegal, and the Gambia. The hotel is a little nice all the way around, um, but that's designed because you know you creating those fresh uh, tours and everything. But what we have set up for Ghana is is not something we want to change or you know want to just leave it the way it is. One Africa, um, Cape Coast Elmina, is where our ancestors were taken from, and it's something we set up to where, you know, even when we tried to go to a coconut grove, which is an itinerary that I would do for other people, you know, it's, it's not there. Those reservations and that place is not even always available, but you're very limited. And the way we have the tour set up, it's like one Africa only have like 10 rooms. The Caracol Hotel have a lot more, so you have to split people apart and you have to work certain arrangements. Certain people who may want certain things, you make sure you're clear with them on that. But it's like, it's a situation where someone has to walk from the other hotel or you can stay at one Africa where it don't have, you know, where you don't have a fridge or AC units. 
Um, but it's a place where we've stayed, and it's been fine. So it's like these are the things that's there in details. Where even when we're doing videos and things, we're letting people know certain things. But it's like if you want to know specifically everything that you're going to be dealing with on this journey before you start, the best thing to do is look at the full day-to-day -day itinerary. And just like you see the general terms, itinerary and the overview is right here on the website. So all of these things just going over in general, and let me just go through a quick flow of the presentation that I have. All right, so page uh, four about us, Bowman intro. So it just uh, talk about where I'm from, certain background as far as talent, skills, and how I got to where I got based on being more of a technology person and then working my way into building a future business in tourism and business administration. All right, slide number five. And this is just a list of the tours, the first uh, Africa journeys that, that um, as far as my travel. Uh, I spent 2003 studying about the roots and culture, and then 2004 is my first year actually traveling to Africa. Uh, so this is Senegal, March of 2004, and Egypt, April of 2004, a journey led by Dr. Renaud Karashidi. Right, and the following year, I went to Senegal and South Africa, May 2005, and then Senegal, South Africa, and Kenya, November 2005, and then the Gambia, May 2006. So that's been the flow of this. My introduction as far as traveling to Africa um, and doing small basic tours, which was some of the last few, to last few uh, journeys, and getting to the point where in October of uh, 2006, it be 13 years ago, uh, we organized what we have today as Africa for Africans Tourism Investment. And the first uh, journey was Ghana, December 2006, you know, that foundation journey where when you look at a conference call recording or if you look at certain presentation where I've been with this only audio pin in the background, uh, that's the first picture you'll see. And that just sparked the foundation of um, one of uh, the first of 16 straight journeys that I took to Ghana leading all the way up to May 2019, and then um, on the way back to Ghana in December 2019. And you know, so that just shows a list of all the journeys in between. And the only physical year that you won't see a journey is uh, 2010. That journey was moved to the summer of uh, the following year. That was uh, July of 2011. Um, so from 2004 to 2019, that's been my 15 years journey and experience on the African continent, and that has spanned nine different countries. And uh, other countries that um, that I've been to is Togo and Benin, which is combined with two of the Ghana tours that we have had, one which was in 2009, October, and then November of 2017. And then the Ethiopia journey was a journey that um, I was a part of just to help with documentation and uh, Brazil, this is another journey. Uh, so these are my experience on the African continent as we begin to grow and connect and have several uh, new people that I either organizing tours for or look into this expand business with. Uh, so yeah, a lot of wonderful uh, schedules and flexibility to begin to this, connect with other people to offer uh, and just, you know, organize um, Organize uh, certain journeys for people that um, you know want you know maybe a private uh, journey and so on. But the best that we can offer is this full roots and culture tour that uh, when we put our budget together, it just gives us so much more and able for us to just recruit and hire full staff. As I talk about these different journeys um, from 2006, everything, all the countries that's mentioned is on. A YouTube uh, as far as videos and you know full this literally different aspect of the tours from us at the hotel, us on tour sites, us doing interviews, us preparing to get to the different countries and so on. But it's uh, it's over, it's around or over 1,500 uh, videos, and the photo galleries are a lot more. And it's um, right there on my YouTube page. Just click on photos and then click on uh, albums or galleries, and you'll see a whole lot of galleries going all the way back to 2006. As I mentioned, that's you know, the foundation year of 
you know, when I begin to start documenting almost everything that's online. Before that, everything was just on like videotapes or DVDs and things like that. So that's that you know, time frame when you just take it to the next level and you know, try to reach out to more and more people. So on uh, page six about us, um, you'll see those two links, but also you'll see links to the Facebook group pages. And the Facebook group pages are just pages where I do my best to just post as much updates and anyone that's just out there in general that's trying to follow what we're doing can always just send a message and you know, we'll see the message and communicate back. All right, so let me just uh, go over the dates of what we have um, as a start with the first tour and just give a nice little overview. Senegal and the Gambia, April 3rd to the 13th, 2020. All right, I'm skipping a few more about us page, and I'll start off with uh, Senegal. All right, so Senegal and the Gambia is a 10-day itinerary. Uh, so that's uh, two days of travel um, to and from Senegal. So right now we have flights arranged from Chicago, JFK, New York, and Atlanta, Georgia, and they all connect directly into Paris on Air France and take us directly to uh, uh, Senegal, the new airport uh, DSS. All right, um, and so we have, the breakdown is five days in Senegal and three days in the Gambia, and that's a combination of two different hotels in Senegal, uh, one the first four day and then one the last day and then in between the three days in the Gambia. So again, uh, the itinerary, we have the day-to-day -day itinerary and the, the tour overview. Let's tell you exactly what hotel that we're going to so you can be clear up front and know what hotel we're going to. That way um, there's no surprise or any secret uh, or anything. Uh, so everything in this presentation is to give you full clarity. Uh, that way you're clear on everything before you commit to anything or before you make any kind of decisions. All right, in this up, uh, Packages all of the transportation, um, and it talks about a round trip drive to uh, from Senegal to the Gambia. So the full accommodation uh, for this tour from Atlanta to DSS, which includes flights, is 3,300. Now, if you have your own flights, or if you work for the airlines, or you just have your own connection of flights, or whatever the situation is, and you want the land package without the flights, that's $2,100, and additional 400 for single supplement. And we scroll to the next page, page 12. We're just gonna, I'm going to explain what's included. All right. So it's transportation and tours throughout both countries. Uh, so that's just on our tour schedule. If you decide to do anything late at night or, or so on, naturally that's not included. Uh, a daily exercise and meditation session, and that's based on literally people who are on the tour with us and and just organize ourselves to be available in the morning. If not, then it's a, it's a free expression of just exercise and meditation that we recommend that people do to just get a good focus start. Daily continental breakfast and gourmet dinner. So I usually collect, um, collect a list of just what everybody eats or their diet type, and that's how we come up with the, the gourmet dinner buffet. Hotel accommodation, double occupancy. So all of the booking is for two people to a room unless you pay for a single supplement. Uh, repatriation and investment networking. So um, it's been a while since I've been to Senegal. Uh, so connecting with a lot of uh, people from a while back. But um, looking to build something light as far as some networking. Uh, not you know it's not a full conference or anything. Just wanna you know whenever we do any tours, it's always something where we just wanna have a focus meeting, whether it's a small group or whether it's a big conference about repatriation investment. Uh, just basically living and doing business in Africa and us connecting and building that connection. Entrance uh, to all sites and activities, uh, certified English speaking tour guide and crew. Um, and what's not included is uh, lunch, group tips of $50 per person, and camera slash camcorder fees if any of those things exist or doesn't exist. Uh, just let you know that it's not something we covered. And then anything else that's just not really in the part of what's included. What I'm gonna do is just go through a there's a few different, um, just a quick uh, tour overview. I have three slides um, dedicated to this, the list of things that we're going to do in Senegal and the Gambia. All right, so while we're in Senegal, uh, tour Gori Island and the African Holocaust uh, Dungeon Museum in Senegal, let's do a full extensive tour. That's just all day. The car uh, city, full city tour of the roots and culture. We'll go to markets, uh, 
and, and a few other uh, religious uh, places, but these are not places we're going to go into. It's just like, you know, you're driving by this, around the city and you're just pointing out certain things. Uh, Sheikh Antadiyap University, National Assembly, the Palace of the President, Independence Square in the car, the Renaissance African Monument, that's a walking tour, the Black Civilization uh, Museum, that's, an, that's also a um, walking tour with our guide. And the other one we should be, you know, one is a one is a monument and one is a museum. But that whole site right there, that's our goal to tour it. And then below, I have a part where you just spend some time and just move around. And the goal also is just to document all of these fresh, um, you know, fresh uh, countries and cities that we're going to. That I didn't get a chance to document like the way I wanted to document them, like we do now in full 4K HD. That way, when you Watching this on YouTube on your big TV, you can you know you can see you know you can see you can see it in a realist form, to where it feels feels like a picture the way you can walk through it. Uh, so that's the the technology that everything is being recorded. Now what I mentioned uh, in Senegal, those are the first two days, and the last day in Senegal we're going to do the Pink Lake tour, uh, cruise around on a four by four. Uh, there's a village uh, close by, a Filani village. What we said for that day also is to do lots of shopping. So uh, we're going to go to these for uh, to different market and the manufacturing, connect you to just the world of this uh, arts and craft. All right. So while we're there in our uh, Senegal, you're not too far from the beach, and you do have a tropical view of the country. I'm looking to this uh, find something where we can you know, possibly do a boat cruise or something either in Senegal or the Gambia uh, for nightlife. Uh, so that's one of the ideas I have on there. Uh, but um, beyond that is just a lot of tropical food, traditional dance and drumming. And look to just re-energize. It's a nice sort of network in, in Senegal for you. And the same thing in Gambia. Now the, the last um, slide for this part uh, is just on the Gambia. And just kind of just put as much information on you as possible. And everything is just an overview slide. So we do the full city tour in Banjul, including various markets, uh, or what a golden beach. Uh, and talking about beaches, it's a lot of beautiful beaches right there in the Gambia, and you know there's beautiful black sand beaches. You know, you won't realize that the sand is black until you literally walk in the water. Uh, we visit the, the, the Gambia Museum while we're on the city tour, presidential sites, and just like in Senegal, just make our way around uh, the city in this highlight and show as much as possible and a few things we'll be able to do uh, walking um, and you know, lots more shopping. And the African Holocaust part of this uh, country, the Gambia, uh, we'll tour James Island and learn about the transatlantic European slave trade. We'll go to Jufri, home of Kunta Kente, Alex Eli Roots. So that's what we have all set. And then both of these overviews uh, highlighted the hotel at the bottom so you can see the hotel for clarity. All right, and what I want to do is just talk about a few more things for uh, Senegal and Gambia, which is set for April of 2020, and all of the information, full details, is on our website right there in the main menu. Beyond Ghana, the Gambia is the uh, only other country that we have that requires a visa because you don't need any in Senegal, and then unless you stay in more than 90 days in South Africa, no visa is required. So while you're there on the tour link information, you'll see um, you now, a simple link that's a say Gambia visa. You click on it, and there'll be an application, and then there's an overview of what's uh, what's needed. All right. So what I provide also is a link directly to the actual the location where the files are and the, the details on their website. All right. But the the main thing is a regular visa is one hundred dollars, and uh, you have to do one passport style photo and one application. So uh, Ghana is in duplicates, um, and the Gambia is a single. Uh, so it's not really much else uh, required on there. Uh, you just fill out the application and put in a few documents. Uh, you definitely have to put your passport in the package. If you are looking for any kind of uh, express, um, you know, which I don't recommend, you know, you're looking at about another $50. But the visa itself for $100 is more than enough. So that's on there for those who are traveling with us to the Gambia. I'd like to make sure that we have all the visa information and details freshly out. 
And this is something that I have on the email also. Um, the important things like visa details that should I have on the email list. And for the most part, I try to have it typed up, uh, have samples and things like that, which I'll go to uh, towards the end as we, we talk about the Ghana visa, which is a lot more detailed. All right, so everyone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop for a minute or two and get some more questions for those in reference to Senegal and the Gambia Roots Tour, uh, April 2020. Just press uh, star six to unmute yourself. All right, uh, so family, the line is open. If anyone have any questions in reference to the Senegal and the Gambia Roots Tour, all you have to do is press star six to unmute yourself. And also family, once again, we're reading from the Africa Tours and Investment presentation uh, PDF or PowerPoint file. This was sent uh, two days ago and it's Mark attached presentation. All right, so no questions, so I'm going to continue. So the next uh, country we're dealing with is uh, South Africa. And the South Africa tours are set during a Thanksgiving uh, break that they have here in the U.S. Um, uh, this year it's set for November 22nd to December 2nd, and next year November 20th to, to the 30th. Uh, so that's uh, our South Africa tour. And everything that I'm going through is the same for both tours, the same exact tour, just different time frame. Um, and all the tours I have are the same exact tours. And what we do is just go to, like we have always said, is just to take it to the next level, do better, make it more organized, make it more focused, oriented. And any little small things you can do just to make anything better. Um, that's what we do in the next uh, you know, tour. And if we need to change hotels or upgrade or downgrade or do anything, you know, we make those adjustments as we do the next one. All right, so uh, I'm on uh, slide number 16. All right, so this is South Africa 10-day itinerary. And uh, this 10-day itinerary um, will have uh, flights. And let me just, just go give a quick overview of the flight situation. Uh, and also for boat tours right now, there's 15 people on boat tours for, for this year and for next year. Next year, we obviously have more time, which would be is wonderful. So the goal is to double the size. But that's why we're working with a group of 15 for this year and a group of 15 for next year. Uh, so this year, unfortunately, uh, we, have, we got locked out on some of the tickets. So right now, we have half of our group leaving directly from Atlanta, directly to Johannesburg. And the other half is leaving from Amsterdam directly to, to uh, Johannesburg. So everyone that uh, is traveling with me um, next year, the goal is as soon as the ticket counter opens up to reserve our tickets is to order more than enough tickets, um, just double what our numbers are, which would be 30, um, which is a good estimate. Um, on day one when the, those tickets are available, that way we can lock down having at least 30 seats of tickets available to leave for Atlanta you know, um, next uh, next year, All right? Because once I went back um, a month later, when people started showing interest, it was too late. So that's why I explained. So um, the way I arrange these things is um, the first group of people will be with me, so our transportation arrangements will come get us, drop us off, and then me and you know me and the driver, one or two other people will come back and get everybody else. So all those things will be laid out and explained in details. And what we have set up is the WhatsApp group page. Um, so everyone should be on there. So those are the things that we communicate directly on, like a, a, a private forum like that. That way we can focus on any specific details. And most of those details will be sent, uh, you know, especially this the last month. Uh, so look out for text messages, WhatsApp messages, and just certain emails directly in reference to your tour. And as I speak about one tour, you know, look at it as me just speaking about the others because it's the same flow and foundation of what we have set up. All right, so once we all get to Johannesburg and settled, uh, the other flight segments we have is from Johannesburg to Cape Town and back, and that's the domestic flight on Mango Airlines. So those reservations also have been finalized, and 50% of those 15 tickets have been paid for, and then we're required to pay and the balance um, 
as close as two weeks. So the goal is to take care of that usually 30 days as we try to do everything as you know, efficient as possible and try to just get things done in the medium time or just the quickest time and not, you know, when, you know, we're cutting to, cutting close because we're doing two tours at the same time. It's um, South Africa in November and then Ghana in December. So everything is done at the same time. Um, you know, so literally spend this entire week uh, working on tickets to two groups and just organizing all those things in the system to where our names show, we can access flights and things like that. So, you know, that's the kind of work we do. in you know, if you're traveling to Ghana, we got everything done way early, way ahead of time. South Africa, that was the normal time that we processed things. You know, 30 to 60 days, we have flights uh, all in the system and done and ready to go. All right, the tour package for, me, for, for South Africa is 3,700, and it's the same for this year and next year. Um, if you have flights, um, then you're looking at 2,500 for land accommodations, and also the land accommodations in this situation will include the the, um, the domestic flights. As our goal is to just make arrangements for as much things as possible, that way individuals don't have to worry about booking their own flights and doing things like that. I find when people have to do those things, they end up missing certain sales and certain deals, and the price will go up, and then they you know may not be interested in traveling. So. The way I do things as far as these tours is to handle everything for everyone, and you know, and you want to do if you want to do certain things, it's not all up to you. But you know, what you're paying include us to take care of everything for you to make it simpler. And you know, the only thing is that you have to be clear that everything that we're doing is for a group, and it's a group effort, group energy, and that's how we work everything. Uh, so you know, we are limited to. You know, certain you know when things are due or when we have to take care of certain things, we're limited on what we can do. If we get to the point where we get too close to certain things and we have to cancel tickets, it's what it is. We just have to do what we have to do. That way, we proceed with everyone else, and then everyone has to understand that the deposit that you paid, that's what's used to cover whatever is uh, canceled or lost. Uh, so it's a system set up to where you know we don't put ourselves in a situation where we lose all kind of money because people change their minds and things come up, you know, so not throw, you know, say anything about anyone because I do understand this life happens and we're thankful that you have showed interest and want to travel with us and do business with us. And, you know, we're going to do our best to assist and look out for everyone as best as possible and make things work out. But, you know, we want everyone to understand that we're limited in certain things. Uh, so as I go through this and try to just talk about as much things as possible in this recording. The additional uh, cost of single supplement, in this case in South Africa, because the hotel is a lot more expensive, is uh, $500. So again, we have a wonderful um, newsletter and also this um, uh, itinerary itself that goes to just the flight schedule, all the details for South Africa. The same thing, just click on the tour link on the website and you know, all those information is there that, you know, we want you to look through that way when we do a conference call. We don't have to go through so much of those information. We can just do the overview and then get, you know, questions. All right, uh, so uh, not to go over the same thing for um, uh, Senegal, but it's the same exact thing as far as what's covered, what's not covered, and, you know, it's, it's an all-inclusive tour except for lunch, group tips, and any other fees outside of our normal scheduling, like when you do nightlife. All right, so I have two slides, uh, number 18 and 19, dedicated to the, to the Johannesburg and Cape Town overview, which is, this was really an overview. We'll do a little bit more than what it's uh, listed as. Uh, so some of the sites that we're looking to visit while we're just there on tour, especially for the first two tour days, which is uh, mainly a combination of Johannesburg and Soweto. Uh, and then we also have certain things set for we live in you know, that area. So the Seti Cultural Village, uh, based on the crater of human kind, that's not in that area. That's a little out, but uh, that's one of our welcome highlights. Mandela House in Orlando, West Soweto, and that's a national monument now. Hector Peterson Memorial and Museum, uh, the Apartheid Museum, Old Fort at Constitution Hill. Uh, Pelanisburg will do a full um, game reserve, and that's literally... Uh, 
set for it like it's a full day. So we leave early and come back late. Uh, so the goal is for us to just make sure that we have our hard drive space or the storage space on the camera, camcorder, ba our batteries charge up and everything. And it's something that, you know, new, this never, and so look into this, expand our horizon and just get some documentation showing other aspects of what's going on, different parts of Africa as far as tourism, or as far as this interest, you know, different things are going to interest people, but the goal is to do as many different things and then document it and bring out the interest as we begin to just do what I've always done and to show this wonderful things that's going on in Africa, the beauty, the culture, the history, the fun, the excitement, and then those things is, you know, that's what I first started doing and just worked my way up to where we are, but that's always the foundation of everything. Uh, so we set for lodging at the Portia Hotel, Johannesburg, and this one is ca called the Partonian Suite. So it's an all-suite hotel, got beautiful garden views of the city, and yeah, it's a nice little high-rise. Uh, so that's a nice little comfortable lodging uh, for everyone. So make sure people are comfortable so they can focus on certain things. And each of these journeys are different. Um, Hotels are going to vary, sites, history, culture, and everything is going to vary. So that's why the overview and itinerary is so important. Uh, that way, for people looking at a certain kind of tours, you can just look at the different options in this, you know, connect with one that really connects with you. But at the same time, to the goal is to just lay out a multitude of things that, you know, we can just connect more and more of us in the African diaspora to build that interest in Africa. Uh, so while we're at Cape Town, um, and we have to adjust the schedule, um, and I'll share with the group of folks when we talk some more. As uh, there's a festival going on at the hotel that we're staying at, and it's one of those political things where we are we're part of the uh, lodging arrangements. Um, as I found out a few days ago, is for us to be a part of the festival, or you know, we'll have access to the festival. We're not going to spend our whole time there. Uh, we'll still do the regular tour itself. So I'm going to find out. One or two things that we can adjust that way. There's a few different things as far as what that festival offers that be unique uh, for that experience. And you know, so you know, it's one of those things where most of the time when we have these tours, they're not set around certain festivals or anything. But if sometimes if we're caught into something, then we'll do our best to you know, make the best of it, enjoy it, and do some of the things we have on the schedule. Uh, but uh, let me let you know the things that we're definitely going to do. Um, the ferry to UNESCO listed Robin Island. Nelson Mandela spent 18 of his 27 years in prison. So that's one of those historical parts of a you know, tour where we just, you know, you just add on. Uh, panoramic sight uh, from the top of Table Mountain. Uh, so that uh, Table Mountain is actually close to the hotel. We're going to have to see about the Castle of Good Hope and Minnesota Lighthouse, but the goal is also to do the township tours. So uh, the things that will be maybe adjusted or removed will be very light. Uh, so I just want to put that out there up front and any major that you are looking forward to, let's not remove. All right, so what I'm going to do is pause as I roll the slide down to and I'm at the, uh, the Ghana itinerary and schedule. And uh, see if anyone have any questions for the South Africa journey, and let's take a you know, take a pause of a pause for now. All right, so family, it is star six to unmute yourself. Um, just want to find out if anyone have any questions in reference to the South Africa journey, whether you're traveling this year, or next year, or whether you're just inquiring. Let me see. Hi, brother Bamani, Teresa here, Delaware. Okay, uh, what is the story on the exchange of money? Are we going to ha be able to exchange cash in South Africa this year or not? Is it something we should be concerned that, about before we travel? Uh, good question. Um, for those who are traveling to South Africa with us, um, I would recommend that we get our money in the U.S. if we can get it. And then also the options is once we get into the country, the goal is to take you to a, you know, a location where you get your money exchanged. And another option is uh, us to get it exchanged at the hotel. And then another option is to get one or two agents that maybe can meet us here and there on our travel and our route. And those are all options. Some of them 
you know, we do in Ghana, but this is like I have a full load of options in that case. So, and the goal is to get everyone access to ATMs and things like that at least every day, be able to be in a route to where we find out who needs certain things and get it for them. All right. Well, family that's traveling this year, every day the exchange rate changes. So the 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 credit card thing, they need to be aware of that. You know, foreign exchange fees. <laughs> so it's good that you said if we can get um, if Cougarans, is that correct? Uh, it's our rand, and the rand is also for one U.S. dollar. It's uh, 15 rand. So if you have 100 U.S. dollars, you get 1,500 rand. Okay. All right. So and they are available in the U.S. Uh, you know, I can't guarantee that uh, we're all leaving from Atlanta airport and some leaving from Amsterdam. Those are two international airports that I would think that would have that because, um, especially with the route that goes to South Africa. And yeah. so that is something that, you know, what I'll also do is I'll, I'll check on that. And those are things that I want to start posting in our group chat and WhatsApp. Uh, that way, you know, we just all clear on things like that because sometimes most of those folks don't come on the call, or some people may miss it. But you know, the goal is just, you know, to share those important things. So I'll make a note of that one. That's a good one. Peace. Thank you, Brother Bomani. See you in a few weeks. Peace and blessings. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So you're fine with your login on your tickets, you know, when you, uh, when you go to the uh, Yes, I checked the tickets. I checked the, uh, the seats. I changed the uh, – I made the special food. Um, all of that's already done. I got my travel insurance, all of that. We're ready to roll. I love booking it when we get set up through Delta because Delta don't come with the drama that Kale and Air France have because in our December group, we can't, none of us can do any of those things. None of us have access even at seats unless you like, unless you have one of those Sky Priority, um, which another thing too, uh, do you have a Sky Miles? Yes, I, I, I did my membership on that too. Right, perfect. Uh, so, family, for those who are all listening, uh, those who are traveling with us, um, uh, we do these flights. It's a long segment. So it's a lot of uh, miles. Plus, also, it's just, you know, I'm not saying it's all of that, but there's a few, you know, bonus and things like that that helps, especially if you're, you know, a frequent traveler. And one of the things is that you end up getting stuck on a KLM or Air France. You know, if you have a certain priority, you can go ahead and get your sit Get a, you know, get complimentary uh, economy seats. Cause what it, what KLM and Air France do is, they charge everyone if you want to get your seats ahead of time. Other than that, uh, it's usually under 30 days or sometimes up to one or two days where you, your seats are selected for you. Uh, so for those who want to you know, select their priorities, they'll be able to do that. Uh, so if you see anyone traveling, uh, especially if you travel in South Africa, and you see your KLM route won't let you choose a seat without cost. That's because of that situation. Uh, so you're, you're fine, especially once the ticket is paid for in full, you're guaranteed a seat. Um, where those, those reservations are locked in. It's just, only way I can honestly explain it is just their way of making additional money. Yeah, because, so. And also, all right, so family, um, uh, someone else was, Line was open for South Africa. My name is Donna Gates. I'm in Atlanta. I was um, slated to join the um, Ghana trip last year, but I had uh, death in the family. So um, my question about the South African tour is, uh, first off, um, when was the deadline? I'm just curious about that. If there has been, if the deadline is passed already, and uh, the other question I had was, um, and I joined the call late, um, you, when you were talking about the South, the South African tour, you mentioned something there at the end about $500. Was that associated with um, a single occupancy room lodging? Uh, yes, and if you can give me a few seconds, let me just make sure I answer some of your questions right away. Now, as far as the $500, it's that you want a room by yourself. Other than that, the booking comes with two bed, two bed, two separate beds. So if someone just want to their own privacy, that's that option that we have. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, 
And then the other question that you had was, uh, is it too late? So I'm trying to hold uh, for the next seven days, really, to close out on the final South Africa, uh, because we have a few tickets that, you know, that's available. Uh, so I'm trying to offer the tickets to other people, because a few people, this last-minute cancellation and things like that. Uh, but so if you're open, let me know, and I can add you. I just need to know where you need a ticket from. That way I can tell you what we can guarantee up front. Okay. Okay, I'll be in touch. Thank you so much. No, I'm saying where do you need a ticket from? That's the most important thing right now. Oh, oh, Atlanta. Right. Atlanta. Uh, yes, we, that's, that's where we have enough tickets from, Atlanta. So um, are you looking to come this year? Yes, yes. 2019, like in, in five weeks or so. <laughs> and you're ready to go. Just want to make sure. Not quite. So I've got a couple questions for you that I'll probably reach off reach out to you offline about if you don't mind. Uh, not a problem. It's just, uh, some private communication. That's no problem. Uh, you have, do you have my number? I have it. All right, perfect. So just shoot me a text when you're ready to talk, and I'll make myself available, and I'm available up until uh, midnight tonight. So um, okay. I'm going to you're gonna reach out to me. And, you know, urgent matter, and, and that's include anyone that just needs to talk to me, especially about a tour like Ghana December or South Africa November. Need to talk with you right away. That way we can, because once we release the tickets, uh, and this is also for everyone, once we release the tickets, there we can't get them back at the same price because other people just jump and take it because that's what some people do. They wait till you cancel your tickets and they'll take the tickets. Uh, so yeah, all our world of uh, flight arrangements and things is complicated, but uh, our goal is to take care of it for you. So um, and make sure I pronounce it right, Sharad Gates, or is it? It's just Gates, Donna Gates. Donna Gates, all right. So that's why your middle name that shows up. All right, Donna, so let me make sure. That's, and for everyone that's uh, still listening, just um, get your question uh, ready while. All right, so family, the line is open. So I'm going to just meet you real quick, uh, Donna. All right, so family, the line is open. Now we just went over this in the, the Africa tour an investment presentation, Senegal and the Gambia, and then the uh, South Africa journey. And the last thing that we have to go over is the Ghana journey. All right, so family, um, our Ghana journey, it's a 12-day itinerary, and uh, it's set for December 24th to January 4th, and then you get back to the U.S. on January 5th, and then May May uh, 25th to June 5th of next year. So these are uh, 12 days itinerary, which um, means you have uh, 10 full days in the country. And a breakdown of those are 10 days or four days in Accra uh, and Greater Accra, three days in Kumasi in the Ashanti region, and three days in Cape Coast and then Elmina in the Central region. And uh, this tour is set for full accommodations with flights from wherever you are as best as we can in the U.S. Um, with our Delta KLM group booking, 3700 and with our flights, 2500 and single supplement is $500. All right, so we have a business conference, um, and this is the same thing for both tours, uh, transportation, uh, two meals a day, uh, lodging, double occupancy, and Certified English speaking tour guide, and the same thing uh, that's not included uh, no lunch, group tips, camera slash camcorder fees, or anything that we do in the nightlife or outside of the itinerary. Now, what I have is four different uh, slides. Of Let's go over the uh, once you're in Ghana, uh, one of the main days that we have set up is the city tour, and then we go up to the mountains. Um, there's two parts of the mountains we go up to is Avery and Two to where we do the we go to the orphanage. And so while we're in the mountains, uh, we'll go to the wood carving village, we'll go to the botanic garden, or we'll pass through the University of Ghana. And then the city tour itself is it's um you know basically Accra Independence Square, and you know it does have the Black Star Stadium, it has Independence Arch, it has also. This is where in 1957, the big memorial or monument uh, of uh, Ghana independence. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois uh, a Memorial, Kwame Nkrumah Memorial. 
if we get a chance, we'll go by George Padmore um, uh, Library. But that's just mainly something that I have highlighted, because uh, usually we can never get a good you know, tour of it anyway. Uh, but depends on who's the tour guide, um, whatever tour we're doing. Um, usually we try to make our way over there, and then the tour guide you know, give a little history of uh, George Padmore. So the three names that I mentioned was part of you know, a certain independence energy before and after. So um, that's the importance of that connection. All right, on the third day I've set up, um, uh, this is uh, literally uh, the African ancestral wall. So we're going to go to an area that's called Prom Prom and Ningo. So this is going to take us directly about 45 minute drive once we leave the hotel. And it's going to take us, the closest popular city is called Tema. And Tema is also the location where zero, zero coordinates are as far as you know, the scientific location of the center. Uh, so you know, it makes kind of a very special uh, location. Uh, so when we get to um, a good brother, uh, Jerry, um, uh, place, uh, which uh, is uh, titled a few different things. So he has a few different things going on there. He has Maledna guest house, so he has some guest house, house available for those who are in that area and those who want to stay back on tour. Uh, he also has a brilliant uh, ocean view uh, restaurant. And then you know the 90 large portraits that remind us of the power, courage, and brilliance of those who have come before us. Uh, so it's, it's incredible. I have wonderful videos from two back-to-back -back here. I have May of uh, 2018 and May of 2019, but now I have the memorial wall on all the tours I've, as I've reorganized the, the tour schedule as of uh, you know, this December coming up. And also for those who are interested in us, reach out to our good brother. Uh, you know, he has a link on, on Facebook and also his email is there and contact information. And also, also just promoting for those who are, you know, some people may not be traveling with us or may be in that area. Uh, but you know, that's a part of our energy of networking. Uh, so we're there at the Micklin for you know, you know, for those uh, four days. The first night we get in, it's nothing much but nightlife, and then three days of tour, and then we check out in the morning on the fourth day. All right, so I have the next destination as, as Kumasi in the Ashanti region. Now, if you travel with me in December, we're going to actually go to Cape Coast, Elmina first. We're going to visit. Um, we're going to visit the land site that we've been organizing uh, for those who are looking to connect on a whole new, uh, incredible experience as far as living and doing business in Africa in a community with beach access and just a lot of wonderful uh, things and energy. That's because we have arrangements uh, set up one Africa where, and we have to make some adjustments. Uh, this is just a bunch of bookings uh, at that time. Uh, so what I'll do is um, I'll just explain that in detail and just move to the fourth slide and then go backwards. Uh, so once you leave from, you know, leave from the Micklin Hotel, this is a shorter drive. Um, the location we're going to is hour and a half, and then from the location of the land presentation, it's hour and a half to uh, Cape Coast, Elmina, and that's hour and a half to two hours um, max. Uh, so what we set, have set up is the Sin, Sin Manso last bat will be done on the last day as we head to Kumasi. Uh, the Akoma Academy Arts and Science uh, Academy uh, is set up to where for those who are interested in bringing school supplies, uh, donations, and uh, we get some wonderful performance uh, from, you know, from the students also. And then the highlight we have is uh, Elmina or Cape Coast Holocaust Dungeons. Uh, we usually have Cape Coast as the dungeon we actually go to. And for those who are interested in an optional, they can use some of the schedule to do their own connection to Elmina with maybe one or two other people that want to go. But um, it's something that we that found easy just to focus on one dungeon where we're not running from one to the next, where we can do a full detail presentation and get the fullness. Uh, so that's where the decision came from. And then for those who may not necessarily want two back-to-back because -back, most of it is similar uh, with exception of the different uh, European invaders and conquerors and white devils and so on, uh, groups of, you know, of people. The, the, one of the uh, connections that we have, um, just like we passed through the University of Ghana uh, in Lagan, we'll be passing through the University of uh, Cape Coast. So that's one of the things we do on all of the tours. Uh, Canopy Walk at Kakum National Park. 
and uh, networking with Sister Amicus of One Africa. Uh, so we have One Africa as the main resort everybody stay at, but if someone just don't want to be on a resort and would like certain things, like a fridge in your room or AC unit, which One Africa doesn't have, but you do have a fridge if you need to store your medicine and certain things, but trying to set everything to where people have all the options they need and that way we don't inconvenience anyone, but it's something that you have to be clear on up front. Uh, One Africa is where I've always stayed at, and that's where we're staying at, and it's just the place to be because the best thing about it is we don't have to walk across the street from the Carrick Hotel to One Africa, and then you're right there on the beach. Uh, so, but some people may want more of a layback stay, or and then some people may want a room by themselves. So it's hard for me to accommodate you with a room by yourself in One Africa because she doesn't have enough space. So, and one room is one big bed, but the other nine rooms are two separate beds. So it's a perfect accommodation for couples and, you know, but not necessary for people in a single room. So naturally that's one of the stipulations I have. If you want a single room, I have to put you at a Carrick Hotel because I can't accommodate you at One Africa. So those are the communications we have with this. And then the May tour we have, we're back to the normal flow of things where uh, this part, One Africa, is towards the end. And once again, we, we tell everyone that One Africa and... The Carrick Hotel is a brand new hotel, very nice, uh, but it's still not a five-star hotel. Um, but we t uh, and so if anyone wants anything closer to a five-star hotel, that's more I would recommend the Carrick Hotel. But they don't have a pool and they don't have certain you know, certain things. But it's new uh, lodging, big bathrooms, big beds, big rooms. Um, uh, all of us are set to stay there on the last day on this itinerary coming up in December. And most of us, for the first few two days, will stay at One Africa. So that's something that um, myself and Amica has worked out based on the overflow of schedule that she has. Um, and I had to change dates, and I didn't get back to her in time because um, uh, tickets went up when we were doing tickets. So you know, a lot of uh, these arrangements, we just do our best to work out. So that's actually we want us to be cool um, and just go with the flow of the movements that we have between One Africa and the Carrick Hotel and things like that. Um, and if anyone does directly need to talk to me about that ahead of time, please just call me so we can talk to be clear. The goal is to make sure that everything is cleared up. That way we have little to no drama as possible because once you're there for those 10 days, it's like you just got to make the best of every single minute. Uh, and um, if you use any of that time to focus on anything that's going to throw you off or negative energy or things that's we don't need to be worrying about um, because it's what it is. You know, you're going to miss out. So I want to put that out a heads up and clear to everyone about that situation and let everyone know that uh, whatever you experience there um, is part of the experience, including you being at a Holocaust dungeon. You may feel like you're about to pass out and dehydrated and you may feel like you're on your feet for too long and, you know, many things like that. And it's a special, uh, and you know, it's a special experience, and that's also the part of the itinerary where if you need clay bath massages, um, we need, you know, certain things. You you are there in an all natural resort, so it does kind of complement itinerary uh, based on what we you know do, what we're focused on, which is give you an incredible experience. All right, so the Carrick Hotel doesn't have a website, but One Africa does, so you can click on that. But also, you can just, you know, you can Google both hotels. All right, let me go back to the Kumasi part. So um, in December, we'll leave from there, um, and after we enjoy just a wonderful three days of roots, culture, history, social nightlife, and just bringing in, the, in a nice New Year at One African Carrick Hotel, we'll be just setting off the, the year, driving towards uh, Kumasi. And I talk about Asin Man, so we'll literally go to Asin Man so before we actually get to Kumasi. And that's where ancestors took their last bath when they were marching down from the northern region before they went to the dungeons. So usually the itinerary is all the way around where we're coming from Kumasi. And we go to um, Asin Man for the last bath and get that presentation. And then one or two days later, we go to the African Holocaust dungeons, uh, Cape Coast, and the story connects. All right, for this December tour, the goal is to... And then this may work out for next year also, but um, the May journey is to stay the way it is. And for this one, we'll see how this one all goes. Um, may this work out better in, in, a, in a different situation to keep the itinerary what we have in December the way it is uh, since it falls towards the new year where we just 
and then one Africa is a perfect place to close out the year, and then Kumasi is a perfect place to kind of start the year. Uh, and the way the itinerary is absolutely fine, and if we find out that the itinerary works better of what we have set up in December, and we need to move it to May, we'll do the same. But that's the goal: is just to work these itineraries as best as possible. But also, family. The last set of things that uh, I want to talk about is uh, the different things we have in Kumasi. So we're set for to stay in the Mikkelen Hotel, and that's the best lodging that we have. Um, this beautiful business hotel, and this compound is much bigger. So you have the weight room, and you have other things that you can get there: massages, you can get haircuts, you can, you know, it's a full uh, compound. And then there's a pool there, just like. Um, in a crowd, so a lot of times we have our little pool party sessions and things like that, and then you know we just encourage everyone to bring their swimwear, and then come out swim, and to socialize with us. So the whole itinerary to make everything as social as possible. Now in the heart of the culture of Kumasi, we look to go to the Ashanti Palace, um, Menshia Palace. Um, the only issue I have with that palace is that you know it's like I can't record anything or take any pictures, uh, so. I don't really participate in, you know, in the presentation. So uh, they'll show a film and then walk around the, the palace itself. And uh, we'll, I'll be out just uh, working on other things. And uh, um, yeah, usually, it's, uh, the, and, and you find they usually have the tour guide there, and if, you know, that way, one of us is always around. Uh, but I enjoy that to the, the fullness. Of this, it's, it's 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 incredible. The only thing that frustrates people most of is like when I can't record certain things because a lot of times you want to go back and watch it and look at it because a lot of this information is powerful. Uh, so, you know, but nevertheless, that's and that's the same situation we have when we go to certain uh, countries that are French francophone countries. You can't do and you can't record certain things in museums. But you know, so give and take, you'll find that situation here and there. But that's the only place in Ghana I know that you're limited, other than. You know, we can't record on anything dealing with military or government or police and you know, as far as their buildings and their facility or, or the people themselves that are in uniform. Okay, so um, the main two craft villages we have is Banwe, the home of the famous Kente Clot, and we have Intanso, that's where we have these incredible um, Adinkra stamps where you can stamp here and stamp there and create beautiful clots. And we're going to be driving to the University of Science and Technology uh, in Kumasi. Um, so, all right, family, uh, that's uh, number 24, and this is literally, I, I stopped at uh, basically slide number 25, and for the most part, the rest of the slides go on is about uh, investments in business. So, uh, this conference call is not set up to do more of that. Um, I have another conference call that we just talk about business and repatriation and investments. So, I'm going to minimize uh, this, uh, I'm going to just roll the slide back up. For those who are uh, screen sharing can see this, and for those who don't have this or can't find uh, this um, presentation, I can always email it to you. Just send a request email to AFTA2010 at msn.com. All right, so family, the line is open for questions and answers in reference to any of the tours. And while I'm answering questions, I'm going to be just going through some of the final updates as we close the call in the next uh, five to ten minutes. So star six to unmute yourself, give your name, uh, where you're calling from, and your question. Hey, Bomani. This is Sean calling from Macon. All right, greetings, Sean. How are you? Fine, you. So I'm calling um, just to ask a general question. How often, you know, I, I know you have a set itinerary for the places that, because I'm going on the Ghana uh, tour in 2020, I know you have a set um, itinerary on, on, as far as where we will be staying. How often does that itinerary as far as where we will be staying ch changes up? You know, all the itineraries that you're looking at, they're permanent itineraries. They're permanent okay. for, Ghana, uh, for Ghana itself. Uh, and I look to keep the rest the same. If there's something specific about the itinerary, you have to let me know. Because um, I need to, I need for people to voice how they feel about certain things, so I can take a note of it. Okay. Um, but the one of the things that people have asked me about uh, is five-star hotels, and um, the difficult part of that is is going to the people we build business with, which you know you, you and tell them that 
you know, basically what they're going to look at is that they're not good enough and we should go, go somewhere else when we don't have any issues with them or they don't disappoint us and they literally go above and beyond. Um, like people have asked me. Yeah, so I wonder if it's one of those situations. If, you know, cause some oh. people, no. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, you know, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't mind staying in, you know, a three-star or two-star hotel. That's not, you know, not an issue for me. Okay, appreciate it. Yeah, all of the hotels are black-owned hotels, and all of the establishments on the Ghana tenor is uh, all us. Uh, so it, it's created a you know a good program where we build incredible business with us, and and as people you know, don't do certain things and don't you know, operate in, in respectable, organized business manner, you know, we usually just keep the relationship going. Uh, but um, right. and uh, for those who may have saw. Uh, recording in Takarati. Um, it, was, it was a real nice hotel that we stayed at. Didn't do much recording because it did rain a little bit. But um, those, that part of the itinerary that we had last May is now uh, removed to a 10-day country, 12-day itinerary in Ghana in general. But uh, okay. so, uh, let me know if you have any questions about anything else. All right, everyone. Um, it is star six to meet yourself. Hey, but my name is Matrell. Uh, greetings, uh, Mitchell. How are you? I'm good. I was just wondering, um, for the locations where we actually have to um, pay or get permits to take pictures, do you have like a listing of that so we'll know in advance, or are you not sure? Or does uh, it change all the time? <laughs> you know, the only time I remember that happening is when I was in Ethiopia, but trust me, I can go somewhere tomorrow and somebody tell me about a camera fee and I wouldn't know. Uh, but okay. there's no way I can think of. But the only thing I can tell everyone, if you have to do that, it's literally equivalent to less than, you know, less than a, you know, less than one dollar. Uh, but the big thing about it is the camcorder. Uh, you may go somewhere where someone tell you have to pay a hundred dollars for the camcorder fee, and in that case, what we do is just secure your camcorder, and then you just enjoy the site and come back out. But the last place I do remember that was Ethiopia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, not Ethiopia. I keep on forgetting. The Botanic Garden. Um, but, yeah, um, but, you know, what I'll do, I'm going to try to make life simpler. I'll, I'll just, uh, as we tour around for the next year, I'll make a note of these things. That way we can at least put them on there, say this site, this site. So appreciate the suggestion. I'm going to try thing, too. Uh, how was your login? Were you able to see the dates that you requested? Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. Okay. All I have to do is pick some meals. <laughs> uh, yes, perfect. And um, uh, since you're traveling in December, uh, I literally got everything in earlier because while I was doing uh, South Africa, it was, it was just simpler and easier to just do both tours at the same time. Uh, okay. So we got a little head start. So, But the tickets will be finalized as far as payments. Uh, in close to about, you know, but you're looking at about um, two weeks, 14 days, give or take, um, to where they have the full balance, and then a few days later, all of us will get a paid in full receipt, and that just tells you that your ticket is paid in full, and everything that you you're logging in and doing is finalized. So yeah, so that's um, the best way that you know um, that you know I see doing tickets. Um, everybody else maybe have a different process, but this gives you a better feel of things that you need to put in, updating your contacts and so on. All right, and Bomani, I do have a question about the airline because I, I have never flown um, internationally. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I have, but I haven't flown internationally in a standard seating. So is it is it like a big difference? Do we Should we upgrade? You got any recommendations? Are the seats really that different? Uh, when you get a chance to upgrade, I mean, it may be worth it, but you have to also look at what the upgrade costs. Um, okay. Personally, me and most people, we just find in the back, we just chilling, kicking it, and just uh, just facing <laughs> ourselves for the flight. Um, and but um, as far as economy comfort, you get an extra about six inches. Yeah. Oh wow! Okay. And, uh, I remember, I remember, I remember being there at the airline, and that's part of the job, expanding the seats in that area. But um, the way the aircraft is laid out is, you know, you know it is. It's just business. Now, what can I offer to get some more money from our folks who paid all this okay. money for the tickets? When I should have <laughs> going to the same place. <laughs> yeah, when, okay. when, when, I, when they know they naturally should have made everybody get a lot more room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
All right, perfect. All right, so family, we're coming close to the end, and I um, wonder if anybody have any questions. I don't have much updates beyond what I've gone over, but I'm looking at my update sheet to make sure everything is checked off. All right, and uh, also anyone that's literally looking to get started, just send me an email saying I'm ready to get started. And so uh, whether you register or not registered uh, is absolutely fine, but the main thing is to send me an email so I can know that way we can just talk and go through everything. So the ideal thing is to just go through everything and then jot some questions down and talk with me so we can go over everything. All right, so family, the line is open. Just um, give your name, where you're calling from, your questions. And we're going to be closing on the next few minutes. Don't want to hold everyone. Yes, this is uh, Kenneth calling from Orlando. Um, <clears throat> my question is, I have global entry pre-check. Now, normally when I travel, it is on my um, flight tickets. Will it be on my tickets this time, or do I just need to show my card for global entry? Uh, yes, you definitely need to show your card for global entry. But as far as the tickets, um, the day when we when we send you a ticket that say that's your receipt and it's paid in full, that's the day when you can either call the airlines or add that to it, uh, add that to the system because it is an electronic ticket, so everything will be updated. And when you're ready to, you know, print like a day or two before you go, those things will be on there. And it's just like, you know, my Sky Miles and things like that. It's, it's not on there at first, but once you log in and you set everything up and it's finalized, it will all show. Okay. Thanks. Absolutely. And so, family, what I'm going to do is, since uh, we're all leaving for Ghana in literally two months, or a little over two months, two months and you know, 10 days. Uh, what I'm recommending, if you have not done it already, please submit your visa. If you run into any problems, they're not clear, if you need to talk to me, please, I'm available. Call me, especially during the daytime um, or the afternoon. Or, you know, matter of fact, it doesn't really matter. Just communicate with me. The main thing uh, I want to explain to everyone dealing with the Ghana visa is that the attachments um, is the most important thing for you to print. Uh, one is what the visa looked like, and it's going to be in your passport, and your passport has to go in the mail. Um, other one is the requirements. Um, another one is a sample um, visa of mine, and then you have the blank application. Now, the sample visa of mine is just a typed-up example, and it's up to you to change the information that needs to be changed on there, which is what I recommend. Type it up print and sign, and then print the other one and sign it. All right, so um, let me go through the list. What I have is a quick check sheet. And this is when I send you the flight itinerary. The flight itinerary usually have a quick check sheet, sheet that lets you know that you need to print the flight itinerary. In this case now, we have access to our login. So the flight itinerary that I sent you before, which is linked to your group book, and you, you don't need to use that because you can print a fresh itinerary from your login. So you print that out and put in the package. Um, so when you look at that that, that uh, email, you, if you print that check sheet out, or if you just you know, or if you just even print other requirements, you, you're basically checking the things off to make sure you have everything in the package. So now you're going to staple two password style photos to the top right of the application, and you're going to select either multiple or single entry. A single entry is sixty dollars, and for those who are doing single entry, you can do it now because it's only good for three months. And uh, multiple entry, which is good for one to five years. I have no idea which, if you're going to get one, two, three, four, or five, but that's the range that, have, that you, have, you, you get with a multiple entry. And that's $100. And what you want to do is do a money order payable to the embassy of Ghana. See, and the main thing is no personal check. Uh, so that's the list of the, and let's look at the requirements. Let me see if I can just pull that up. Well, let's say right here uh, on the actual um, requirement is visa fee, it's a cash, money order, postal order, cashier's check, or certified bank check. Um, and what I just usually recommend literally is just 
the money order. Um, it's the simplest thing to deal with because for the most part you go into the and you go into the post office, so you can just do that right there and save yourself any fees. But uh, that's what uh, the documentation say. All right, family. So the list of other things uh, when you're doing a visa package um, is uh, you may see something that say bank statement or a letter from the bank. Um, so if you have any issues with the numbers, just cross out any numbers as far as amount or account number. But it's a verification process where you just where you look at a, a bank statement as a legit paperwork to connect with everything else you have in the package to verify and check you off. All right, so once you gather all these documents, uh, you want to do a prepaid return envelope. So you want to have outgoing tracking and return tracking. So with outgoing tracking, you know, once they scan it, you're in the system. So you'll be able to log on to the, post, the U.S. Postal Service uh, website, and then you'll be able to either get yourself some text messages or um, an email sent to you as the tracking updates uh, the purpose of that, of that system. Now your, your return envelope that will be in the package, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a copy of, you know, literally just a copy of the tracking information. Uh, sometimes it's not going to be on your receipt. Uh, so make sure you get that and, you know, you can just paste it on your receipt. But the main thing that I personally recommend is just take your phone and take a picture of your return envelope and your outgoing envelope where you see the track and label and have a digital copy of that also. And, you know, and that's what people like myself do to keep up with all these things. And uh, you can even email them to yourself. Uh, but the tracking, and then in a few days, uh, or I'll say you know, a few days later or seven days later, just put in the return tracking and see if you know it's giving the information coming back. And then you just do the same thing to you. You can just request email or text update, and then you'll be able to track your package. That way you know when your package is coming. And know that all they're going to send back is your passport, and then you open it up and verify you have your Ghana visa and verify everything looks good. If they send you back the entire package, that means something is not right, and you did something wrong, and you just literally have to just take your time, look through it. And in that case, if you need any help or you know, if you're frustrated about certain things, uh, let me know. But ultimately, what I recommend is to put a, a flat rate return envelope in it where it's prepaid and it's not you putting some stamps on there and certain things where you literally pay for a flat rate envelope that way in the postal the post office pick it up um, and it's just flat rate so your you know your passport is light so it should be no problem. And um, and that's all you need and uh, one of the the requirements of anyone traveling with a child and it's one of those things where you have to just communicate with me about what you need. That way you can verify that I give you everything that you need for clarity. Now, if the child is under 18 years old um, and is traveling with one parent and you know, need a childbirth certificate and both parents are licensed and a notarized letter of consent from both parents, that's the simplest way to fix that problem of those requirements. And then whatever the different situation is, then just work it in the letter and just get it notarized um, and you know, as different people have different situations with um, children. Um, you know, it may be a grandmother taking a grandchild and then she has to communicate with both parents to work certain things out. Uh, so those are some of the things that I'm always here available for us to go through. Uh, so family, um, as you can see, it's a lot of information, so I did my best to go through a summary of it without uh, keeping the call too long, but I've um, been talking for about almost an hour and a half. So I want to open up the last thing for any questions, especially on the visa, for anyone that's traveling to Ghana with us on any tour, if you have any questions about the visa. I'll save one of the most important things for last so we can have a little time to talk about it. Hi, right, family. Well, appreciate everybody's uh, energy. Everyone have a good night and take care and I'll uh, connect with everybody. All right, so family, good night, and I'm going to just uh, unmute everyone.